In this video we will take a look at how we can use Access Camera Station to integrate with the ACAP applications that we have created. So this video will focus on the configuration of Access Camera Station, but it will be focused towards ACAP developers. But we will not dive into how to actually develop the ACAPs in this video. Instead, I will assume that you have already created an application where you have a web API to control whatever you want to control in the application and you are producing events uh, using the X event library. Um, so I have created two applications already for this to demonstrate what we are going to do. And the first thing we will do is to uh, send data from the ACAP application to the Access Camera Station. So we will do that by using the X events that we trigger from the camera and we um, use them as triggers in Access Camera Station to um, run other event actions. And the second thing we will do is that we will create buttons in the live view in Access Camera Station, which you can click and this will send information to the camera to configure the camera or, or configure your application um, in a specific way. Um, so we can create either toggle buttons or momentaneous buttons that will send um, an API uh, request to your ACAP application. So let's get started with uh, the first step, which is to make use of events in Access Camera Station. So on my screen now you can see Access Camera Station and you can see that I have one camera connected. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to install our application that will pr be producing the events. So we go to the management tab, we select the camera, we say install uh, application and we will select which application we want to install and I will install the Edge Impulse uh, detector from fixedit.ai uh, which allows us to run uh, deep learning models that we have trained in Edge Impulse uh, and, and online MLOps uh, studio. Um, and these will then be run in the cameras and they will produce um, access events when, up, when uh, objects are detected. So we have now told the camera to install this. We can see that um, the status goes to maintenance. We see that we have a task added. So in just a minute or so, the status should change back to OK again, meaning that the application is installed. And here we see that. And Access Camera Station will actually also start the application after installing it. Um, so this application should now be running and there is a default model in it that gets triggered by um, objects, uh, um, more specifically um, post-it notes. Um, so we will go to action rules uh, to make use of this. And this is very familiar to the action rules in the cameras UI if you have been working with those. Um, so essentially um, what it is is that it allows you to make use of events triggered by the camera or by other sources in Access Camera Station and then trigger actions uh, based on that. So the main difference from the in-camera event system uh, is that um, here we have access to events from all the cameras that is connected to Access Camera Station and also to other events produced by Access Camera Station. So for a trigger, we will um, use our application. So we can see here that we have a bunch of different things that Access Camera Station implements. Um, but we also have device events, which is um, the events produced by the device. So if I now select this specific uh, device and go to the event tab, we will see that uh, we have essentially the same things here or exactly the same things here uh, as you are used to seeing in the camera's event rule engine. Um, including external ACAP applications that have been installed in the camera. So we can see now since we installed the Edge Impulse Detector, it um, shows up here um, as an object detected event. And this event will be triggered whenever we have an object um, or a post-it note in front of the camera. So we can um, tr try this out now by just looking at the activity timeline here. So I'll take my um, post-it notes and I hold them in front of the um, camera and here we can see that we got um, events triggered by this. So that seems to work fine. Let's click on OK and move on to actions. 
this is where you define what should happen when we get this event. Um, so I'm going to do two things here. Uh, first, we're going to raise an alarm, uh, which will show us a text box. Um, it, will, it will show a text box in the access camera station with this title and a description. And I will show it for five seconds after triggering it. I will have it enabled all the times and I will call it object detection rule. Um, so if I just enable this now and wave my post-it notes in front of the camera again, we can see down here object detected. And we can also um, see down here the timestamps of the um, alarms. Um, so another thing I can do if I want to is to um, go again to actions and I can add another action. So let's add an event uh, or a live view action here and say that we should um, switch to a live view of this camera whenever we get uh, this object detected event. So if I now again show a post-it note in front of the camera, we will see that it switches over to a live view of the camera. So that is how we can make use of events produced in the camera to control things in Axis Camera Station. So let's now disable this event and we will um, go on to the second step which is to send commands from Axis Camera Station to our ACAP. So for this, I will make use of another ACAP, which I created for this demo purpose, which is a simple application um, that shows a crosshair um, in the live view. So this application implements a simple web server with two different API endpoints, and it draws an overlay on top of the video feed with a red cross crosshair, and we can control from the um, ACAP's uh, web API if this should be displayed or not. So this is of course a dummy application. Um, you would replace it with whatever you want to do in your application uh, that you want to control from Axis Camera Station. Um, so now when we have this application installed we can go to Live View and check out this camera and we will see now that we have a red crosshair which is produced by this ACAP application. So let's now go back to action rules and we will create a new action rule. This time we will select action button, which means that we will create a button on a live view that allows us to control things. We have two types of buttons. We have command button, which is a um, momentaneous button, and we have a toggle button, which can be enabled or disabled. So this is what we're going to use now. We have two texts, the enabled and the disabled state. And we can also add a tooltip, uh, which is a longer explanation that will be displayed when hovering over the button. And I will select which camera it should be displayed to. We could also select a map instead if we want that. So this has now created a button. So let's um, create an action. What should happen when we click this button? And the way to communicate with the device is to use an HTTP notification. So this is the um, IP address of my camera. And we're going to make use of the um, web API in the application, so that is in local slash the name of the application and then the name of the API. So let's copy this. We will need to have it for the disable event too. And we do need authentication. And we can now test this out and we got response here cross enabled. So we know that Axis Camera Station have um, communication with our ACAP and that it works as expected.
So I now have a button to enable my crosshair. Um, the second thing I will do is to add a way to disable it. And for this we will create a new action rule. Um, and we will create a new trigger. We will again select action button. This time instead of creating a new button to disable it, we will um, use existing button. And we will select the same enable crosshair, disable crosshair button. And this time we will instead trigger on disable crosshair. Uh, we don't need to change anything here. So we go on to actions and once again we will send an HTTP notification to the camera. So this time we use the disable API instead. And we can again test it. Hair cross disabled. So that seems to work. And now we have our um, two um, action rules to enable and disable it. So if we go to the live view now, um, we can see that we have a new button here, enable cross here, if I click that. And a notification is sent to the application and the crosshair overlay is enabled. And I can now do disable crosshair, which will remove it again. And um, doing this, you can add multiple buttons to control multiple functionalities in your ACAP application. Um, so this is a very useful way to um, control things in your application from um, an easy to use user interface. Um, and it, it's a very powerful way of using ACAPs. So if you need help with developing an ACAP, um, or if you want us to develop an ACAP for you, reach out to us at fixedit.ai and we can help you get started, help you with all the resources, help you with implementation, maintenance, monitoring of applications, and um, everything essentially related to ACAP development since that is the only thing we do is to create applications for the access cameras. So thank you for watching this video and I hope it helped you a lot and that you got um, a lot of new ideas for new projects to use the access cameras for.